Yes. Okay. We're uh, we're starting. Okay. Um, welcome uh, everybody to the uh, Tiga seminar on trust and uh, regulatory governance, or one of the seminars uh, in the in the series with uh, lots of great uh, presentations and uh, and speakers. Uh, so welcome all to uh, to this meeting. And the title of this meeting is Can Enhanced Self-Regulation Deliver Trust? An assessment via two sur uh, experimental surveys. Uh, my name is Stefan Grimmelikhuizen. I will be the chair and discussant of, uh, of today. And uh, we'll have three excellent speakers who will all be part of this uh, written, uh, uh, written uh, uh, draft paper and who will all present today. Um, we have uh, David, David Levi Fire. Uh, I think uh, most people will know him, of course. Um, he's a professor of political science at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Um, and of course, published uh, a lot of uh, great work on regulation, public policy, and governance. And is, of course, the founding editor of Regulation and Governance. governance. Um, uh, Duval Feldman. He's a professor uh, of legal research at the Bar Ilan University, the Faculty of Law. And uh, Libya Maman is a PhD candidate uh, at the Federman School of Public Policy and Government, uh, also at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Um, what we're going to do, uh, we have uh, about one hour. The presenters will present about 30 minutes. And uh, after that, there's room for a Q&A session, which I will uh, moderate. And um, before we start, I want to note that we're recording uh, this session. And I would also uh, ask the people who are not presenting to switch off their microphones to prevent noise. Um, okay, that's it. I would uh, like to invite uh, the speakers uh, to share their screen. And to kick off the presentation, we look forward to a great talk. Thank you. So uh, thank you everybody uh, for uh, coming to, to this uh, session. I know uh, you are Zoom uh, tired and uh, Zoom uh, uh, fatigue, um, but still we'll try to do it uh, as interesting as uh, possible. Uh, uh, think about self-regulation. Self-regulation is uh, many, many things, right? And uh, together with Rotten Magazine, that should be conceptualized. This is self-regulation that you can trust or you should trust, yeah? So what we are doing in this presentation, self-regulatory uh, design, all kind of uh, enhancement. Uh, Viagras, if you want, yeah, um, like certification and the uh, lawyer, compliance lawyer, and pledges uh, for uh, real, uh, for 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 reliability, etc. So we ask, to what extent of uh, enhanced form of self-regulation there is a there is a, a noise here that. Um, uh, for somebody, uh, can you mute your microphone? Okay, get, great. So what we are asking really, I want to, to know if there are better regulatory design, um, what are the best regulatory designs to enhance trust in market operation? Yeah? So what is uh, the most optimal or the possible range of uh, trust and regulatory uh, design. And our dependent viable, and please go back uh, Libby, our dependent viable is really trust in market. And this is trust in market in a special um, and um, kind of uh, artificial, uh, imaginary uh, corporations that we ask the respondents, uh, do you, would you use its service? Um, so this is what we are trying to, trying to do, is looking at trust and regulation, which types of trust 
and which type of regulation increased trust, and then uh, ask, see what are the results. And we will present the results on those relations. Now, the research questions are as follows. How different regulatory design affect the, um, the willingness of uh, the respondents to trust uh, the, the company? And Libby will tell you uh, uh, more accurately or more, more specifically which type of uh, uh, questions we presented to the uh, respondents. And the second question, um, to what extent self-regulatory designs can meet the expectation for, 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 for trust to the same extent or similar extent than uh, there is regula uh, this regulation by uh, government. So, so the issue is really, and somebody is really annoying here um, with the noise. Um, it's probably me, let me see who, who to blame. Nobody at the moment. So really the question is, can we produce self-regulatory um, mechanisms, design that maximize, ma maximize trust in a certain product to the same extent that, that uh, of when we have state regulation? So we are looking at either and both. And now Libby, you will continue, please. Thank you, David. So um, just to continue the, the research questions. So these questions are holistic in the sense that they look not only on the, on the trust between the regulatory design and trust in the regulator, but on the effect that these two predictors have on trust in the market. Uh, given that trust in the market is the desired outcome of regulation. Uh, so to answer these questions, we designed two, two experimental surveys. Uh, in both studies, we presented uh, the respondents with a fictional uh, hypothetical uh, case, such like David uh, already said. Uh, we focused on um, an open banking company. So the, the respondents read a description of a new service which offers customers improved credit and reduced costs of loans and fees. And to emphasize the possible risk, uh, which we conceptualize as crucial for, for trust to evolve, we stated that if they want to use the product, they must give the company access to their own personal bank account. Uh, we chose an hypothetical case so that we can control for external factors that might affect trust, such as the, the reputation of existing companies or existing regulators. Uh, so this is why we also uh, describe the fictitious regulator or a reg fictitious regulatory regime, which we describe as the regulation of the protection of personal information of fintech services. Uh, in both studies, we manipulated the regulatory design, which is our independent variable. In the first study, we presented three treatment and one uh, control group. Uh, the control group, we didn't describe anything about the regulation. So the respondents only uh, got the baseline case about the fictitious company. Uh, the other three groups, uh, one of them had, has been told that there is no regulation on this, on this sector. Uh, the other two were told that there is a state regulator. One of the groups, uh, we described a regulator, uh, which is a licensed regime based. So the regulator inspects the companies. And if the company adhe uh, uh, adheres to the regulations, then the license is given. And after the license is, is given, there is a continuous inspection and there is a possibility to sanction and revoke the, the license if the, the company um, uh, doesn't uh, 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 comply with the regulations. And um, other state regulation group was told that in this regime, the, con the regulator does not oversee the company after, uh, it doesn't oversee the company, it bases on the pledge of the company. The company states that it complies with the regulation, there is no oversight. In the second study, we had seven groups. Here, the control group was the state regulation regime, the high monitoring. And the other six, 
groups were different forms of self-regulation. So imagine uh, an ice cream, uh, we, that's what we imagined. Uh, each group has, has an additional cone. So the, the most basic one is pledges, uh, which means there, there is no regulator in this, in this regime. There are rules and the company uh, states that it com complies with the rules. And then the other uh, three groups have an additional tool uh, which uh, include internal inter intermediary, intermediary, which is a lawyer uh, in the company, within the company, which is in charge of the fair management of personal information. Uh, the third group has the approval of an NGO. Uh, the fourth has, um, has the, the uh, certification of an international organization. Uh, the fifth group has all tools and the sixth one has all tools and the possibility to sanction, to revoke the approval of the NGO and the certification. Our dependent variable is trust in the market, uh, was conceptualized as including both the positive expectations toward the market and as the intention to accept vulnerability. In the first study, we used the CTGO scale uh, to measure the positive expectations. And this includes the perceived ability, perceived benevolence and perceived integrity of the company. And we added two more items measuring the intention of the respondents to accept vulnerabil vulnerability as the respondents willingness to grant access to their own bank account. But in the second study, we decided to try a more parsimony approach so that we can reduce the length of the questionnaire and reduce respondents fatigue. This time we focused on four items. One of them was the trust to not that the company will not exploit their personal information. And the, set, and the other two were, were the confidence that the company, their co confidence to grant the access um, to use your bank account. Uh, both time the Alpha Cronbach was, was high. Uh, we had some additional uh, control variables uh, demographic and uh, other variables which we uh, we hypothesized that they uh, act as moderators. Uh, we ran the survey using an online survey panel, employing quotas, and our sample was representative of the Israeli population. Uh, it was just slightly younger and slightly more educated, and the condition groups were mostly balanced. We had different hypotheses for each study. In the first study, uh, we had two hypotheses. One, that trust in market in entities is higher when there is regulation, comparing when there is no regulation. And two, that trust toward market entities is higher when the regulation includes oversight and enforcement. So this is the high monitoring uh, regime, comparing to when it is solely based on pledges. In the second study, we hypothesized that state regulation will be associated with higher trust levels comparing to self-regulation. So state regulation will lead to higher trust than self-regulation of all types. The second one, within self-regulation, if, if it includes enforcement or possibility to sanction, this will lead to higher trust. And the third one is that if we put that aside and look only at the different, uh, the, ice, the ice cream uh, metaphor, so more uh, tools will lead to more trust comparing to just one tool. Okay, now we get to the findings. And I will go ahead and start with the bottom line that our hypotheses for the first study were confirmed. Uh, the public depends on regulation to ensure market integrity and to trust um, and high monitoring is specifically important for, for trust. So, sorry, uh, an ANOVA showed that the groups were significantly different from each other in terms of their trust in the market, uh, which implies that there was a significant effect of the regula regulatory design. Um, as expected, I don't know if you can see my, my mouse, and knowing that there is no regulation reduces, reduces trust in the market. And we can see that the highest level of trust is in the group that had the high monitoring. Uh, we also ran a regression with planned contrast to further test our hypotheses. 
And this too confirmed that people trust the market more when there is regulation. Uh, you can see it here, this is increases trust. And uh, the, it also, when there is high monitoring state regulation, this also increases trust. Uh, finally, for study one, we ran a regression with an interaction term between trust in regulator and trust in market. And we found a significant interaction effect, uh, specifically in the low monitoring condition. This means that trust in the regulator has a positive moderating effect for trust in the market in low monitoring regulation. So in other words, this implies that this kind of regulation, uh, regulation that bases on pledges, depends more on the trust people have on the regulator itself. So when, while trust in the regulator is less needed when the regulator employs sanctions and monitoring, it is needed when the regulator bases on pledge. Okay, the second study uh, included different, uh, set, uh, just as a reminder, it included different self-regulation tools and compared them to state regulation. And the findings of the second study mostly reinforced the findings of the first study. Uh, regression uh, with plant contrasts confirmed hypothesis one and two and doesn't confirm the third one. So uh, sorry for the, the numbers, I will, I will, I will explain. Uh, the first uh, hypothesis is that state regulation is, will lead to higher trust comparing to self-regulation. And uh, here we can see there's a decline in trust when there is self-regulation. Uh, we can also see that, uh, that when there is no enforcement, comparing to enforcement, uh, there is a decline in trust in the market. And we see that the hypothesis that more tools uh, will lead to more trust is not confirmed. In the second study, we also performed uh, a within subject analysis. We did a repeated measure, uh, but we changed the condition. So here you can see the first measure. Uh, and in the first measure, you can see that indeed state regulation leads to higher trust in market comparing to all the self-regulation uh, uh, constellations. But in this first measure, this was not significant, statistically significant. Uh, after that, we reversed the terms, we reversed the conditions for, for the respondents. And we told all of the people that were in the self-regulation groups, we told them that now there is a state regulator. Uh, and for the people that were in the state regulation group, we told them that now there is no state regulator and instead there is a self-regulation regime uh, based on, on pledge, pledges. And we used the same uh, wording like we did in the first measure. And now the, the differences are significant. Uh, and you can see that uh, the groups that um, were told that there is state regulation had an increase in their trust. And the group that has been told that now there is self-regulation had a decrease in their trust. And now uh, we can conclude and I will, I will pass this down to Yuval for the conclusion. Uh, thank you, Libby. So um, um, I think uh, it's always good before the uh, uh, Q&A that we um, do some preemption, preemptive uh, comments about the limitation of our own study. So the audience will have a hard time attacking us. So obviously it's, uh, um, there is some artificial uh, aspects for this uh, study. For example, um, we compare trust in markets and trust in governments, but in a sense, we give trust in government better chance because this is like a fictitious um, a company. No one, uh, none of the participants had any uh, experience or learning about the, the corporation or the company which they need to give their uh, bank details. So uh, in a sense, you could say it's easier for people uh, to, to trust the, the, gov the, the regulators and therefore uh, all of the conclusions that I want to say needs to be uh, taken with this kind of uh, limitation uh, in, in mind. Also, maybe there is something uh, unique in the, in the whole fintech area where people are 
very aware of their privacy and there is this uh, whole notion of uh, government protecting us against uh, corporations, may, maybe in other contexts where people need to trust corporations, but not with their personal details, but with other aspects, maybe there we're not gonna see this advantage of the government protection. Um, and uh, also maybe, uh, and I think uh, um, it's pr probably true for every study, but maybe especially in the context of trust where we know about huge variation between countries, this study was done in Israel um, with uh, a certain uh, unique aspects of the Israeli society and how it uh, uh, views the uh, role of the government in various uh, aspects of people's life. And, and again, I think all of those uh, limitations could be uh, fixed um, in future studies. But again, for the sake of the uh, Q&A, I wanna summarize the main findings we have. So overall, uh, we do see that with more regulation, people are more likely to trust uh, the market. Uh, we see that state regulation was stronger uh, than uh, even the most enhanced self-regulatory regimes. Uh, we, see, we see that uh, uh, when there is kind of oversight and enforcement, the people are more likely to trust it relative to a self-regulatory uh, mechanisms which without oversight, for example, uh, pledges without any additional layers of, uh, of oversight. Uh, we see that sanctions um, were uh, increasing the, the trust uh, in the market. In general, people are kind of are more likely to, view, in a sense, view it as a very effective uh, um, mechanisms by uh, governments when they use sanctions. So they, they want to know that the government will punish those who will uh, abuse their uh, trust. Um, and also we, we find this interesting uh, interaction where uh, for pledges to actually uh, work, it depends to some extent on people's trust in regulators. So people, uh, for them to think that uh, the regulators are trusting the market, they need to, to trust the regulators. So if the regulator, for example, is using sanctions, they don't need the trust as to, the, to the same extent as they need it when we actually, uh, in a situation where the regulator is actually trusting the market and it's actually a very uh, important uh, uh, lessons to other studies. Uh, I see also Eyal here, Eyal Peri in, in the audience, that this is related to some other stuff we do on pledges. Um, so uh, overall, we see that the trust in the market is highly dependent on uh, the presence of uh, uh, state regula regu regulations and also with the uh, self-regulation regimes, there is still uh, a need for uh, the um, protection, the oversight, some intermediary um, agents to, uh, besides the, the market regulating itself. And as I said, we, we need to uh, explore further uh, various uh, important questions about this triangle of trust between how uh, regulators and the state can help uh, people trust the market more, which is obviously uh, an, important, uh, uh, an important mission. So in a sense, rather than uh, seeing the state and the markets uh, as, uh, as competitors, we try to find the ways in which the uh, state could enhance uh, people's uh, interest in market with uh, as limited as possible interventions in how the market functions. Um, so um, I guess now the moderator will uh, lead the Q&A. Yes, okay. You okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks a lot for a very interesting uh, presentation with some uh, uh, very, uh, yeah, very interesting findings. Um, we received a couple of uh, questions on the chat and I would like to uh, ask uh, these people to, uh, to ask their question also uh, uh, on screen. Uh, first is uh, Clar Clareta Trigger. Um, who has a question about the framing of the first conclusion. Can you ask your question or have your comments? Yes. 
Hi, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was a very interesting, very nice presentation. I just wondered, only based on what you presented, why the conclusion or all the conclusions are that uh, the regulator increases trust uh, the, the, or the sanctions or the, 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 ser the more serious the measures are, the trust in the market increases. I would have framed it or I, I thought of it as showing exactly the opposite, that the, the stricter the measures, uh, then, people, then people are willing to, re to rely on the company, but actually it attests to their lack of trust uh, in, in these companies uh, in a sense. And I think that the results from the uh, second study are especially striking when you see that once you change the frame, from the people who thought there was a state regulation and you gave them the self-regulation, it, it dropped dramatically and, and the other way around for the other groups. So I wonder why you still, you choose to make this, this type of connection instead of the other way around in a sense. Okay, thank you. Um... Sure, if the, who wants to respond from the three? Uh, Yuval, do you want to respond? Or? I, I think it's a very interesting question. I think in uh, our terminology was uh, in a sense related to how we view trust is people willingness to um, expose their vulnerability uh, and you know share the personal details. Um, so you are right that maybe the greater willingness to do so um, is not because they trust the integrity of the market, but they trust the market under this regulatory condition to not to abuse their personal, you know, not to, to use the personal details for other means or... Uh, I would say that maybe they trust the regulator to a sanction or to back them up in case that they are in violation or they abuse whatever you give them. This is the trust is in the other direction in the government rather than the regulator in a sense. Um, in terms maybe of the attitudes, but in terms of the behavior, right? So if we are focusing on markets, what we want is people in transaction to be able to, um, you know, focus on the economic life rather than on, on trying to find protections and sign various complicated contracts to protect themselves against abuse of the other party. Uh, so here you see that the presence of the regulators with the all the conditions that we manipulated the help. Uh, participants feel secure enough. So this FinTech company model where you give them the information and they do could actually work. So you're right, they don't trust the market in a sense out of uh, appreciation. Oh, this is, and, and as I said in the limitations, you know, they, they have no knowledge about these corporations, but so the only thing that gives them the, not the only, but it improves their ability to actually, okay, uh, trust-based uh, behavior in this context is actually sharing personal information. And we were interested in what will cause people to behave in, in a way which we are uh, interested in, in context of markets, right? It's not just what they, you know, do they uh, hold them to high regard? It's mostly, can I trust them with my information? But maybe Libby and David would like to suggest a different perspective. Okay, thanks. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have nothing to add. We, we did uh, focus more on the behavioral trust and not uh, the, the perceptional aspect, although we did, uh, we did try to incorporate both in our measure. But I think we, we can move on. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for the question and, uh, and the answers. Uh, Frederic has a, a question about uh, measurement of the dependent variable. Um, actually, there's two questions, so maybe you can post them both. Uh, 
Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, it's not really the measurement of the uh, variable as such, but more the label, because I, th I, I think I understand how you measured it. And as you presented the findings, you talk about the regulated organization or the regulatee, but you label it as market, trust in the market, which is a different concept. I agree. Well, we... Okay. <laughs> we discussed a lot in our internal uh, discussions. Uh, we, using this experimental setting, we do claim that uh, given this is a fic fic fictional uh, um, organization, it is not a specific one, uh, then we can, uh, we, we reveal this mechanism of trust that we can generalize to the market. But uh, you are right uh, that we may, maybe should be more careful in, in, in this justification and, and, and maybe this should be tested in other, in other fields, in other sectors uh, to, to be able to generalize this. But our rationale was that using a, a experimental setting, we can, we can, um, we can say that. Uh, I think you unnecessarily are generating sort of remarks once you try to publish this and from reviewers because it is a different concept and then in the findings you can discuss the generalization which i think is fair but in the actual what you measure does it cover the label of the name but it's a relatively minor point what i'm interested in is that last figure you you showed libby was uh, on the sharp decline with the second measure. So self-regulation after you have had state regulation and you then get a, a, a scenario with self-regulation, it goes way below the ones who were first presented with self-regulation. Is that a crowding out effect, like the uh, motivation crowding theory of, uh, what's his name, Frey, Bruno Frey? Maybe an explanation, what, what are your thoughts there? It fascinates me. Well, uh, I, I will need Yuval's help here, but I will just say our initial thoughts on this. We were thinking that maybe, um, you know, also in the first measurement, the difference was not the, was not significant, the statistically significant, and in the second it was. So these together, your question and these together, we we were thinking that maybe um, in the first measure uh, it still wasn't so clear to our respondents what exactly are we uh, are we asking, and uh, and in the second it might be much more clear. Uh, but but this is something we were uh, also puzzled, and I don't know if Yuval wants to to add his thoughts on, on this question. No, I think you're quite right that it's mostly related to participants' um, greater awareness to the conditions. I, I, will, I, I don't think, um, I have to look at it again. I don't think it's, at least I don't think it's related to crowding out. It's, I think it's more kind of them not fully understanding the, um, not focusing on the correct aspects of the, the vignettes in the first time and improving their understanding in the second time. That would be quite a challenge to the overall design and the, therefore the reliability of your study or not? Uh, Am I overdoing it now? <laughs> um, well, you know, we present both uh, results. The second ones are um, I think it's, it's often the case in, in kind of between subject designs that it's, it's uh, somewhat easier to get significant results where uh, people realize more when you ask them, okay, now compare that to another condition. So now they are they're more likely to uh, think, okay, why do I care about it? Um, so I don't think it's, uh, it suggests, I agree that the second uh, measure, the second kind of um, group of measures is, um, has more noise relative to the first one, which is cleaner. 
but maybe if I can sort of step in as a moderator, but uh, Frederik, aren't you also saying that was what I noticed is that the effect is not symmetric, it seems. Like if you get self then state, it's a positive effect, but there seems a much stronger even negative effect from self after state. So you, then that's puzzling in a way. But yeah. But yeah, that's. Okay. Uh, well, thanks a lot, uh, Frederik. Um, Koen, uh, you're up uh, next. Can you pose your question? Yes, um, yeah, first of all, a very interesting study. Glad I, mean, I joined. Um, so, extremely interesting. Just a small methodological question. So, in the first study, you used the nine item ABI items. In the second one, you use, I guess, the, the question do you trust them? on a certain scale. I was just wondering how these behave and uh, to what extent are related to, if you if you are in the possibility to make uh, correlations across the study. Uh, but secondly, what I was wondering, but it's of course you've all already to go away part of the, the, the question, uh, the culture of Israel and, and the way trust is normally rated in these international surveys, uh, Trust, social trust, but also trust in private actors and public actors. Would it actually make a difference with, with other European countries in, in the sense that Israel is a more low trust country, uh, which um, puts more weight on the, the label of being controlled by the state as being trust, creating trustworthiness, or, or do you see it in another way? May, may I answer the second question uh, of, of Kuhn? So um, in, the, in the surveys, Israel is a low trust uh, country, but when you look at uh, the adoption of new technologies like vaccination and uh, uh, digital technologies, and so it's a very, very uh, pro technology. So I'm not sure uh, how to put it uh, together and we are on our way to, to, to use cross uh, national uh, experiment surveys. So this is the uh, next step. Uh, so I, I'll stop here. Maybe uh, you want to add, Yuval or Levi? No, I, I think on, on one hand, I think uh, uh, I agree Israel is, is a, in, in most uh, kind of world uh, uh, value surveys, it is a negative. Uh, in terms of the, the both the social trust, I think, and trust in institutions. Uh, but uh, I think, David, you pointed out at some point something about Israeli culture giving more respect to the government relative to other countries. Uh, no, we are, we, uh, so we are more atheists. atheists. atheists so right. the, state is, the state is very central to society way of doing public policy and to the culture. So, yeah, this could affect the results, right? So, because because of that, we might see this kind of uh, reliance on regulators overseeing the, the those uh, regulatories because we are used to having the government involved, even if we don't trust it as much. Yeah. Yeah. Great to hear that you will do cross national uh, studies. That's that's that would be good. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Koen, for the question. Uh, next question was by uh, Kerem uh, Koban. Uh, Kerem, maybe you can ask your question live on screen. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for this very interesting uh, paper. Um, I did, I was just only uh, 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 like, uh, interested in like knowing about uh, uh, if you have uh, posed this condition uh, during the during your study about uh, what if the regulator might be a bit uh, lighter when it comes to regulating new fintech uh, uh, services firms to get to allow them to to uh, to like flourish while the firms could be uh, uh, more like concerned about their own reputation. So this could be some sort of a, like, like uh, an additional condition to check under what conditions, uh, as well as the uh, uh, policy sector specific 
uh, factors that might influence uh, uh, participants' uh, observations or their perceptions about state or self-regulation. Thank you. So you, you uh, we, we did have in the first study a condition of no regulation, but you think that if we were to justify that, Mm -hmm. saying that the reason that there was no regulation it's because uh not because yeah. so uh, uh, we are basically trying to say if it, maybe in our uh design when there was no regulation it was kind of a signal of trust in the market but you actually ask maybe uh if we said specifically that the reason that there's yeah. no regulation it's not because they trust the market but because they wanted to to flourish as you say would that change how people view it. Yeah, yeah. It could be, yeah. I mean, uh, probably it will uh, reduce this uh, signal, right? And we, we talked uh -huh. about it uh, in our uh, internal discussions yeah. that in a sense, regulation, could, it's kind of, uh, can go both ways, right? So in one hand, we protect you. and the other hand, we kind of signal to you, don't trust the market, right? Because yeah. this is why we are here. And what you suggest is kind of a way not to be there, but not because you can trust the market, but just because it's new. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I say it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Um, we have a question now by uh, Jonathan uh, Zeitlin. Yes. Uh, thanks you all for an interesting paper and uh, hi. Um, so my question relates to um, the, the literature on regulatory intermediaries, which uh, David, among others, uh, has been uh, developing in recent years. Um, and the results, particularly of your second study, seem very negative uh, concerning uh, what we could call the added value of regulatory intermediaries in enhancing trust in market actors. And so a question would be, how would you situate your findings in relation to this broader literature on, uh, on regulatory intermediaries? And if the effects on consumer trust or confidence are so limited as you find at least in this uh, experiment, why do firms uh, or groups of firms invest in mechanisms such as third party certification especially without the possibility of sanctions? Yeah, this is an excellent uh, question. And uh, it allows me to go back to my work with Rota Medizini. This was his uh, uh, PhD. Uh, and then we, we didn't do experimental surveys. We went to Facebook and uh, uh, other internet uh, platforms. And we saw how their uh, efforts to, to use enhanced self-regulation to control content moderation was uh, frustrated by so many um, failures, public scandals, and so on. So in a way, when I'm thinking about it now, because of your question, uh, we shouldn't be uh, surprised. Um, it's, it's also in real life that all those mechanisms on platforms, uh, they were supposed to um, return trust in, in self-regulation -regula mechanisms, do not deliver the optimal uh, results from the point of view of the public and the, the platforms. And we see it again here. So, so we see it again here, and I was surprised. And uh, this is the, the major surprise. I, I, I'm also disappointed uh, in the sense that I believe that some forms of self-regulation are necessary for uh, uh, civil society, for civil uh, forms of, of, of empowerment. So, so my, my, my view is that the state is both solution to many problems, but also a problems and unsatisfactory uh, solution. Uh, so, so I, in in normative terms, I would love to see some kind of division of labor between the two. Uh, and this is the origin of this uh, study. Um, and we see again and again frustration. Uh, but we need to understand those frustration on the context 
of regulatory explosion, yeah? We have more and more state regulation. We have more and more forms of self-regulation and more and more of European regulation and global regulation. And, and this is what, about, what liberal society is about, is then effort to regulate, not to prohibit uh, everything or to allow everything. So in a way, this is the story um, of politics, policy, and if you want experimentalist governments and all, all our investment in, in governance is about those uh, designs. I don't know if I uh, answer. Um... Yeah, you, know, you answered my question um, actually very, very fully, but if I could, uh, could come back, I mean, something, a, an alternative you don't test uh, in your experiments is the idea of state uh, supervised self-regulation. I mean, if we think of something like a HACCP uh, system in food, food safety, so where the, you, you mandate that um, the, the firm has a hazard uh, mitigation plan, and then the role of the regulator is to, uh, to inspect and, and monitor the implementation of that uh, plan. And it, it could be that that sort of design would be quite compatible with your research findings. And so maybe you should think about including it in a future experiment. I, I completely agree. This is the plan uh, as well. You only add that sometimes in such experimental surveys, you could, uh, as you uh, pointed out, that there is no great uh, added value. Sometimes it could be just by unfamiliarity, right? So this uh, area of intermediary, if you think of the general public and they're not exactly sure what do, I mean, if you study that and you recognize how good and smart it is, you, you think it, it's good. But if you are like a lay person and you just look at something, you might react to things you know, like sanction, uh, but not react to things you think, well, I'm not sure exactly what I get here. So it's not really changing my behavior. Um, yeah. right. Thanks. Thanks for the great question and, uh, and great answers. Um, okay, yeah, the next question was by Frederic, but you already uh, posed that question uh, early on. Uh, Charles Rapp uh, has a question. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very interested in your in the work that you're doing on, on this. Um, I have a question, but before that, just a, a quick response to Jonathan Zeitlin's point. Um, some years ago, uh, there was a lot of talk about co-regulation between uh, companies and uh, data protection authorities. This was championed by Malcolm Crompton, who was the Australian data protection commissioner, and also I think by the Dutch data protection authority. So I'll just mention that somewhere in the in the in the regulatory uh, mix, there is already a, a quite a quite a bit of talk about co-regulation of data protection. But my question is not about that. Um, it's about uh, it's about trustworthiness, uh, and it seems to me that uh, one could design a study to see what it is that people perceive about either the the, the fintech company and also the regulator, what is it that about those, the characteristics that lead people to trust those organizations? Um, for example, for the company, it could be that people say, oh, well, we can trust them. They've never had a data breach or they're an equal opportunity employer or something else. And for the regulator, we know that they make very strong statements about human rights and, and ethical values, et cetera, and so forth. So you might want to, build in something about how you can see what are the trustworthiness characteristics that people perceive. And then you could do this dynamically by injecting somewhere in the, in the during the survey, some new fact. Oh, did you know that this company has had a data breach last week? Uh, or that, uh, that, that, that the regulator has reduced the number of, of prosecutions that they're going to bring against uh, against fintech companies and to see whether people's trust levels change as a result of that. And then you get a handle on trustworthiness uh, as part of the whole picture of uh, trust in companies and trust in regulators. You're, you're definitely right. I mean, it's, uh, 
I kind of mentioned it in it's one of the limitations that we didn't give any information about the uh, reputation of the corporations, how it's dealing with, uh, and, and in a sense, we didn't give them a chance. And, and this is a limitation because there's so many moving, there is that number of manipulation we could have done in those two studies, but I think you are right. This is the, the uh, classical next step is to try and understand what in the corporation and what in uh, the government is is going to enhance uh, enhance trust and and actually there are in a different domain of corporate governance which is more kind of in law there is a lot of research now about uh, like ESG indexes and corporate repute like all kind of things that corporations are trying to do to convince the public that they are actually means they they mean well and that there is trying to understand how is that affecting people's uh, tolerance for what those, you know, all kind of misconduct of such corporations. Sure. And I think people can also, it's a question of whether people perceive um, um, efficacy and efficiency uh, as important values uh, to trust an organization about compared with their ethical profile. So it could be that people might say, oh, well, we know that they have a reputation for handling loan applications very quickly uh, and that they don't discriminate against people who, uh, who apply for these applications. Or on the other hand, we know that they, have, uh, they give a lot of money to good charities and therefore they have an, an ethical profile and so forth. So there are various dimensions of characteristics uh, that uh, people might try and weigh up. Uh, when they uh, think about why I should trust this, this company or indeed why I should trust this regulator. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, good question. Uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, for this. Uh, maybe one idea that uh, comes to mind if you want to do something like that where you have a lot of attributes of uh, uh, and want to compare the effect of them, trust in a company, you could also do a or conjoint experiments where you have two vignettes side by side and you can let people pick you know the one they trust most and then it's easier to do i think with with, with a survey experiment where you would have a huge uh need a huge sample so uh, well, <coughs> maybe an idea um but uh, let's go to the next question uh, by uh, uh reem hey reem uh, rasul uh can you post your question Okay. Thank you very much okay. for yeah. the uh, interesting presentation and uh, it's exciting to learn about Israel. Uh, I was just wondering, I know that you controlled for gender and I was just wondering whether res the result would have looked different. Uh, you know, the level of trust would have differed, uh, you know, between men versus uh, among women versus men. Did you consider doing this or did you deliberately, I mean, is there a reason why you didn't want to know the gender of the respondent? Uh, Yuval, can I answer this? So I, I love these questions, you know, it gives me the opportunity to show additional graphs. <laughs> So yeah, we did we did not only control for for gender in our regression, but we also tested for for uh, 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 gender as um, as uh, an interact interaction. And uh, uh, yeah, sorry for the for the graph, but uh, yeah, we do see that there is uh, there is a difference, and uh, we especially we see specifically we see that. For women, uh, it is more important uh, that uh, state regulation is is uh, is high monitoring. So, if in the baseline, you know, the control group, women trust much less uh, the regulated uh, firm, uh, and this remains the same in high monitoring, they trust more. So, I hope this answers your question. Yes, certainly. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, additional uh, material. And thanks for the question. I see that uh, Jonathan Seidman has uh, second, yeah, that, another question. It, it's not really a question. It was a comment on the question uh, that uh, Frederic uh, raised about, okay, why do you see this big fall off asymmetrically also 
uh, when you uh, change from offering uh, state regulation to no regulation uh, to your respondents. And it seems to me that you have primed them uh, to expect state regulation. And then if you, you say you're going to take it away, they react more strongly than if you had never offered it to them uh, in, in the first place. So I don't think that is necessarily noise or misunderstanding, but rather a kind of, uh, of priming or framing effect. Got it. Okay, so only now I understand what Frederick was asking. And so what she referred to as, as crowding out motivation, you refer mostly kind of to loss aversion, right? So it, the reference point has changed. And now uh, if something is taken for me, it's, it's uh, has greater effect than not having it in the first place, right? So it's somewhere in the prospect theory rather than in the motivational theory. Well, you've also sense. heightened its salience, right? You've right. drawn attention to it. This was uh, what I was saying, yeah, okay. But uh, I understand, yeah, it uh, could be, could be. Uh, definitely a lot of research to support the loss of version. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, interpretation, actually, yeah. Why uh, well, you would see this uh, asymmetric uh, sort of, yeah, which, uh, negative um yeah sort of stronger negative effect of the, the state regulations sort of taken away um okay i see there's no uh, more questions in the in the chat we're uh, almost uh, we're approaching uh, uh 5 p.m at least here in uh, in the netherlands um i um think i i would like to pose one more question uh, as a moderator um it's also um Built on some things that were uh, asked earlier on, and uh, also to challenge this finding a little bit more about the, the state regulation that increases uh, the trust. Um, um, because in, in this case, it's indeed a, like a specific sector might, you know, might 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 have sort of little trust or low trust. This is sort of a new sector fintech. It's dealing with privacy issues, so you would could say maybe this is a low trust sector, or trust is. Also, when you look at the, the average, you know, the mean scores, they're quite low. They're all two, two point something. So it's quite low. Uh, that, so, so that could be one, one thing that, okay, if, if trust is already so low, then, then, you know, then the state will, you know, have a higher chance of increasing this very low level. So what, what about high trust markets? What, what would be high trust markets? And another thing that could also have, you know, um, might be interesting to explore is the hypothetical nature of this company, right? And you are, I think you already discussed that a little bit, but because people have no knowledge at all about this company or very, you know, only what you give them, everything you would give them in the experiment will influence them, right? Or that, you know, there's no knowledge to build this trust on. Uh, so would it be different if you take a well-known company with, with a sort of a, uh, an existing reputation, right? That would be, so you could, it's probably more things for the discussion section, but it would be interesting things to, I don't know, to, if you're doing follow-up experiments, maybe to look at them. maybe you have some final thoughts before we close up this session on, on this issue. Um, Libby, do you want to answer or? I think these are uh, really good questions, which we, uh, especially uh, what, what will happen with a real company and existing reputation, this is something that we are, we, we want to address and uh, maybe in our next study to, uh, to take this into account. Um, that maybe, I don't know, Yuval, if you want to add something. I think these are good, good, good suggestions and we, we agree with them. Actually, I agree with both of what you're suggesting. I think that uh, you're right. It's easier to get an effect in low trust market. Uh, you have more room kind of to just even by statistic, uh, statistical kind of the, the, the power, it's easier. I agree. And uh, you're probably right that in high trust markets, uh, we will have harder time replicating those effects. Uh, in itself, it could be an interesting insight, right? So, I mean, just to understand the uh, role of regulators in such areas, but you're right. 
about uh, uh, tr trying to use, um, let's say, for like the Facebook, right? So you say Facebook and you try to understand how will state regulators affect people views about Facebook. I can see why it's very interesting and more realistic and, but people have so many already like pre-existing views about Facebook. So if you wanna do manipulations, it's possible, right? You could do like, you know, manipulation checks and try and clean up their attitudes for or against uh, uh, Facebook, but it's, it's far more noise, I think, than using a clean hypothetical company. But as earlier um, uh, uh, discussant have suggested, I think we could have added uh, characteristics about the organization uh, and still keep the you know kind of clean slate on one hand with more factors to chew on rather than the current design. Yeah. Okay, that's very clear and, and yeah, there's a good point in that as well. Um, okay, I would like uh, to thank the three presenters, uh, Yuval, uh, Libby, and David, a lot for their very interesting talk, uh, fascinating, uh, uh, fascinating stuff. Uh, I hope you. Uh, We'll get to publish this somewhere soon or do interesting follow-up experiments so uh thanks a lot for this uh, very interesting talk and i would like to thank the audience for listening and for uh, being so active and asking uh, a lot of great sessions so thanks a lot and i wish you all a very nice rest of your day and see you next time in the uh, next uh, next talk thank you stefan and thank you everyone okay thank you, all right bye-bye